All right, y'all. Let's get it, man. So it's going to be the last one, man, just to break it down each individual matchup um, and who I'm going with, man. So we got Missouri versus South Carolina. Some major results in this one. Some guys that aren't playing that's going to have a big-time effect, um, and especially on my choice. I told y'all I still don't think Missouri should be ranked. I know they're 7-2 and two this year. It's been up and down um, all year long. I know they're playing the SEC. They're having a great year. They're both eligible. Um, I'm not going to take that away from them, but I don't think they should be a ranked team. Um, but they could prove me wrong. Um, going in there, going into South Carolina, williams Bryce Stadium, a tough place to play. We've seen Texas a and to come there. Um, going in there trying to get a win. Hey, that does a lot for your favorite. Now, it doesn't say that you'll get into the college football playoff, but it does a lot for the SEC and what you're trying to build. All right, now when we look at this matchup and breaking it down, no potentially no Brady Cook. It's going to be a Missouri quarterback, Drew Pine. Um, status is in limbo, as it says here, per ESPN. Um, so that's that's key, obviously, going to this one. Pines only played six games, three touchdowns, three interceptions. Again, we talked about it before, but Texas a and when he had Marcel Reed, I told y'all, I think could potentially be a good quarterback. But you're going in a hostile environment. You know what I'm saying? You're going up against a really good defense that has some of the top pass rushers in the country, Kyle Kennard. Like, this team will get after you. You know what I'm saying? And think about this, too. Now, I know Gary Nussmeyer has been an up and down year for him as well. But he went in there. He had some struggles early on. So that's a veteran quarterback to a degree. Now, first year starting, but he's been in college for a while. So you got a backup going in, potentially starting. I don't love it. I, I mean, I really don't. And, and same thing, you got one of the best receivers in Luther Burden, 40, 45 catches, 505 yards this year. But, you know, really his numbers should be better. But it's just been so up and down for Missouri um, this year. Um, just getting him the ball and letting him cook uh, humbly. Uh, but nonetheless, man, when I look at it, when I break it down, having a backup going in, I, I don't think it bodes well. Now, when you look at it, the best remedy for a backup quarterback potential to play is running the football. Now, they got three guys they really lean on when you look at it. Nate Noel is one. They also have Jamal Roberts and Marcus Carroll. And all these guys have at one point led in the game and rushing for this team. Now, obviously, the overall leader is Nate Noel with 534 yards rushing and two touchdowns. But... They got other guys as well. So if I'm in Missouri, I've had a passing attack that's been up and down this year and a potentially backup coming in there in a hostile environment. I'm going to try to get the ground game going. Make it easy for him, man. You might have to break off a couple runs. That's over 20 plus yards in this one. Um, and you're going to have to. That's the best equalizer to an elite pass rush. And that's what South Carolina has. Um, they want to get after you. Um, you know what I'm saying? They want to keep you in that pocket and they want to blitz you and they want to be able to force you in the turnover. So if I'm Missouri going into this game, I'm thinking about that and getting those three running backs involved uh, humbly. And I got to find a way to get Luther Bird in the ball, you know, and that could be working him through the slot, let him get some easy reads, some hitches, uh, sitting into some zone, figuring out a way to get the ball in his hands and let him cook. That's what I'm thinking about most if I'm Missouri. If I want to potentially come in here and pull off a win, not going to be easy. You know what I'm saying? Especially with a backup quarterback. Now, on the other side of things, you look at Missouri, uh, look at South Carolina, Norris Sellers, up and down year. I know some of y'all didn't have confidence in him, but I feel like he's, he's shown some different sparks. He's shown that, you know, in some games he could potentially win with his arm. Some games he wins with his legs. Um, but he has that dual threat ability, and that makes it tough for any team because when you have Raheem Sanders in the backfield, nearly 700 yards, 10 touchdowns, and those games he's been having, I think that says a lot, right? He had a big game against Texas A&M, you know what I'm saying? And then Lenore Sellers, like, they was cooking him because he was doing a read option with Sanders, you know, acting like he was going to hand it off and ends up running it, ends up keeping it. So when you have that kind of element of surprise or, hey, you're going to have to be disciplined in what we're doing, it makes it tough. And then uh, Sellers, believe it or not, was making those throws to these receivers like Simon and so many more uh, to in order to be able to, you know, knock off a team like that. So when I look at it, they're going to run that rock with Raheem Sanders. They're going to spell them a little bit. Use uh, Lenore Sellers to keep the defense honest. You know, read the RPO. If the if the edge rusher is, is collapsing down on Sanders, he's going to keep it. If he's not, they're going to run an RPO action and get it to the receivers out on the boundary. And if you Missouri, you better wrap up. You better tackle in open space, not let them get to that second level. Because if not, South Carolina got guys like Simon and so many more that can break tackles and get forward and get down the field and be able to make big plays so if you're missouri you better build, wrap up and you better not let them get going early because if not it might be a long day you know what i'm saying so that's the key there really great rushing um uh team as well 
when you look at South Carolina and everything, I see why they're favored. I'm going with South Carolina as my game pick, humbly. Um, I think that the game cost is going to have a little bit too much backup quarterback, tough spot to be in at that, that, that stadium, in that environment, with those great fans, with the running attack that they have and the defense that can kind of just tee off on you, um, you know what I'm saying, and make it really difficult. I think uh, South Carolina is just going to have too much. So going with the game Gamecocks, Gamecock Nation, rolling with y'all. Big win at home against Missouri, which officially knocks them out, I think, of the standards and the rankings. And another thing I haven't talked about with South Carolina, and that is how well they've been playing the last few games. They've been playing really good, beating some significant teams, man, coming into their own. And that's what you want to see, right? We're 6-3, and three, three games left. You want to finish the season strong. You know what I'm saying? You want to beat teams like this. So shout out to them, man. And it's going to shape up potentially for an, for an elite matchup coming up when they play their in-state rival, Clemson. Now, two different conferences, Clemson ACC, as, um, South Carolina SEC. But that's going to be a fun matchup to watch to end the season. So can't wait, man. Going with South Carolina to get the seventh win. Pretty much proverbially knock out Missouri out of the college football playoff and out of the rankings, I think, humbly. Uh, just too much to stop them. And I think South Carolina is going to show, hey, we, we that team on the rise. We that team to watch next year with our quarterback coming back, him getting healthier, him getting better and better, and him becoming an even better passer. But comment below who y'all taking in this one, Mizzou or South Carolina?